I am at the drive-thru in the pharmacy where I feel like I spend most of my life getting meds for my kids. Um, I brought Jace with me. Jace, can you say hi? Say hi. He was at home and having a tantrum, scratching his face and um, hitting himself and freaking out. And so instead of coming by myself, I thought he could use a change of scenery. So I brought him with me to get his meds. So we'll give him his first dose of antibiotics tonight. Yeah. And hopefully we will see some big improvements tomorrow because today has been a bad, bad day. <laughs> Hi, quick update. Uh, Jace was off antibiotics for four days and went right back into his flare. Uh, so we started him back on Augmentin, which was what he was on before and doing great on for 14 days for strep. And this time it's not working. So after two and a half days, he's flaring. He's still doing all of the same things. Um, so I called the doctor and we are hopefully going to switch his antibiotic tonight to a different antibiotic. Um, and hopefully that one will be successful. Um, which brings up something that is often confused uh, by a lot of people. I know that I had a lot of confusion about it and asked for clarification and this is what I was told. So antibiotic resistance. It is not the child or the person that becomes resistant to these antibiotics. It's the bug that they have. So the bacterial infection that's inside of them is exposed to the antibiotic the antibiotics working, it's fighting off the bugs, and then you feel good, and so you stop taking the antibiotic, thinking that you're over your infection. Well, the infection is often not gone, and what that does is it allows the bacteria time to fight back, and it learns how to fight off that kind of antibiotic. So now, the next time you take the same antibiotic for that infection, it's not gonna work because now it's created a resistance. And these bugs are all over in our environment and we're exposed to them over and over again. So if I create a resistance in a bug while it's in me, then it might end up in somebody else and then the antibiotic that they use might be the same one and it doesn't work for them. So it's actually the bacterial infections themselves that get resistant to the antibiotics, not the people. Um, so since you know there's a limit to how many antibiotics we have on the market, um, we have to be very vigilant in um, continuing our antibiotics through the entire cycle, um, taking them exactly when we're supposed to and through the entire um, round or cycle of antibiotics until they're gone. Um, this time we did that, you know, we did a whole 14 days, but with PANS and PANDAS kids, often it takes a lot more than 14 days and I have no idea why. Um, he could have strep and it could take two months of being on antibiotics to kill it. So um, the plan is to go on a different antibiotic and just leave him on it for probably the rest of cold and flu season. Try to just completely get rid of it. And since that is the new plan, it means that we're gonna to have to be really, really good at making sure he doesn't end up with a yeast overgrowth. Um, so the antibiotics kill the bad bacteria, but it also kills the good bacteria that fight off yeast and stuff. So you have to supply your gut with good bacteria. And you can get that in probiotics and you can give it um, in um, yogurt has a lot of probiotics in it and those are the good bacteria and then to help the bacteria thrive you can give them inulin that's like food for the good bacteria and you can find that in bananas and Jace takes these fiber chewies that have a lot of inulin in them so he takes those every day um, he often won't eat bananas and so we make smoothies a lot with bananas and yogurt um, and he'll drink those and so that's how we try to give him a lot of that and then we always have um, a medication called fluconazole on hand just because we've had so many bouts with yeast infections with him um, and so at the first sign 
of yeast, we start giving them the fluconazole, but you don't want to take fluconazole too much because it's really hard on your liver. So you have to just make sure you talk to your doctor before any of these and you understand the risks and benefits and how to use them appropriately. Um, so signs of yeast, someone was asking me, what are the signs of yeast? Um, obviously in little girls, um, in their vaginal area, they could have a yeast infection, um, that most of us know what to look for with that. Um, but in Jay's, he ends up, um, with his bum being really itchy. Most of the time, that's the sign that we see where he just wants to scratch his bum like constantly. We've also seen like a really white tongue. Your tongue's supposed to have taste buds on it and stuff and, and has like white on it, but it's like white, like really, really white. And even down the throat and stuff, it's like white and sore. Um, so those are the two signs that I've experienced with yeast, with Jay's. Um, so just watch out for those when you're on antibiotics for a long period of time. Um, so anyway, uh, again, I'm not a doctor. This is just stuff that I've learned, um, through experience with dealing with pandas and pans. Um, and thanks for watching Jace's journey and I will keep you updated. Thanks. Can you see your face? Let me see your face. Jace woke up last night with like a hives rash all over his face, especially on the left side. And he was grabbing at his ear and sticking his finger in his ear and acting really bizarre. It was almost like he was sleepwalking because he was kind of out of it and glassy eyed and he wasn't responsive. He wasn't talking to me. He just kept grabbing his ear and he was, his whole body was shaking, he was shaking, and then he started scratching his legs. And I finally gave him some ibuprofen, thinking maybe his ear hurt. Um, and that kind of woke him up a little bit, and he was more alert. And was able to run back to bed, but he never told me what was wrong, he wouldn't talk to me. Um, so this morning I kept him home from school. He still has the rash on his face. Uh, I talked to the doctor. He said to give him ibuprofen and Claritin, see if the rash was inflammation, see if it would go away with that. And we're switching his antibiotic. Right now we're on a Z-Pack and he's calling in a new one. So, um, He's just really upset and having a hard time. I just picked up Jace from the bus where he continually kicked and hit me and whoever got near him. Um, he's just really, really in a flare right now. We started Cephalexin two days ago and it doesn't help. It hasn't helped at all. Um, he has this rash on his face that I'll show you pictures of. Uh, I talked to some of my pandas, moms, friends, and they thought it maybe was something viral called slap cheek or slap face, something like that. So I'm going to have to look into that and maybe this is viral and that's why antibiotics just aren't helping right now. But, you know, picking him up from the bus when he's like this is just such a challenge. And it takes forever to get him off the bus because I'm dragging him while he's kicking me and hitting me and trying not to go with me and hiding under seats and jumping over seats, trying to get away. Jace, sit down. Special children on the same.